join me in a moment of silent reflection on these words we have just heard. Amen. It can be tough to discern God's call for us. Amid the noise in our lives and the cynicism that seems to dominate our culture, it can be tough to discern God's true call for us as individual people and as a gathered community. And it can be even harder when we have discerned what we believe to be God's call to actually step up and follow. And this is nothing new. We need only look to the record of our faith tradition to know that this dual challenge has been faced by people throughout time. Noah. We all remember Noah. There had to be some doubt when God called upon Noah to build an ark and informed him that the world would be destroyed by flood. At the very least, I would imagine that there was some internal uneasiness. I always think about Bill Cosby's classic bit on Noah. When informed by God of the plans for world devastation, our friend Noah responds, Right. <laughs> How is this really? <clears throat> what about Moses? He was a fugitive from his homeland, living with people in a foreign land, while out tending the flocks, and yes, there seem to be a lot of shepherds in the Bible. He hears a voice emanating from what appears to be a shrub engulfed in flames. But this burning bush is not consumed by the fire, and God speaks to Moses, calling upon him to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Now, if we accept the manner in which this story is portrayed by Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments, there seems to be no hesitation at all in Moses believing that it was God, in fact, who was speaking to him through this botanical speaker phone. But we are all familiar with how Moses responds to this call. Uh, um, I'm not your guy, God. I don't speak too good. Not exactly the most enthusiastic acceptance of God's call. And then there was Jonah, called by God to deliver a message of repentance to the people of Nineveh. Like Moses, he expresses no doubt that it is God making the divine request, nor does he articulate any initial reluctance. But we all know what, Noah, what Jonah does, right? He gets on a boat heading the opposite direction from Nineveh, as if he can just run away and hide from God, because he just really doesn't want to do what God is calling him to do. Then there is something about a storm at sea and a big fish, something like the story of Pinocchio. <laughs> Even Jesus who seems throughout the gospel accounts of his life to faithfully follow God's call for him, when it comes to the point of facing the climax of his story and his own death, even Jesus expresses that very human sense of reluctance, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. You see, this is why I love the Bible. Not just because I am contractually obliged to say that <laughs> as a minister, <laughs> No, it's because the people in the Bible are so, well, human. And we can see in them a reflection of ourselves. Today, it can be even more difficult to discern God's call for us in our lives. It seems, as far as we can tell, that it was far more common for people back then to go around claiming that they had, had heard the voice of God, calling them to take some action or share some message and while I'm fairly certain that there was skepticism back then as well, I'm equally certain that the level of skepticism is far greater today when someone says, so God spoke to me last night, and God told me to tell you. Honestly, how would we react to such claims? My guess is that we would begin by taking a step back, creating a nice buffer. Our faces would comport cynical disbelief. And we would attempt to determine if the person who was speaking was some sort of threat to themselves or to others. 
As I said, it can be tough to discern God's call for us or to bring others on board when we have discerned it. But let's take a step back and take a little bit, talk a little bit about the idea of God's calling as we understand it in our lives and in our faith. The Westminster Dictionary of Christian Theology defines the word calling in this way. The notion of God's calling in particular is inherent in the whole of biblical religion. And God's calling is supremely effective in the fulfillment of God's purposes through whom God calls. Based on this definition, we are called by God for a purpose and for reasons. Most of the time when we talk about being called by God, we are referring to ministers. The process by which a minister is, comes to a church is called the search and call process. Even our contracts as ministers are not referred to as contracts, we call them call agreements. And I can't tell you how often, growing up the son of two ministers, I was asked whether I was called to ministry. And later, after I did go to seminary, asked to explain when I first heard my call to ministry, and then asked to describe it. And I imagine that Ray and Aaron can share similar fun stories about being peppered with these questions about your call. It's good times. <laughs> but we clergy are not the only people that God calls, even to vocation. I believe that we are all called. Throughout my life, I have known many amazingly talented teachers who were clearly called to teach. In my brief time here at Manhattan Beach Community Church, I have met several people who, based on personalities and talents and the way they approach things, were clearly called to be engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and my older brother, perhaps the most argumentative person I have ever known, was called from a young age to be a trial attorney. <laughs> This language of call goes beyond just vocation, as we are called to act in many ways and in many venues throughout our life. And we are called into the church, each of us given a sense of purpose as individual members of a faith community, and collectively as an expression of the body of Christ. And just as individuals can be challenged to discern how God is calling them, communities of faith called together by God can be challenged to discern how God is calling them. There tends to be a little more public acceptance when a church claims that God has called us to do something, but there still is skepticism, I'm sure. But in any case, it is a vital process, this discernment process, that we go through as people of faith and as a faith community, this process of discerning God's call. Here at Manhattan Beach Community Church, we have engaged that process, and the result is a mission statement, statement that asserts that we are an inclusive Christian church that equips each generation through spiritual growth and fellowship to serve the South Bay. And I might suggest, given the ministries of this church just described this morning, that commitment goes beyond the South Bay out into the wider world. In addition, we have articulated an understanding of our common statement of faith, stating that we believe we are called, called, as individuals and as a church to be instruments of God's love in our homes, our community, and throughout the world. These statements work in harmony with our core values of being spiritually inclusive and socially accepting, being a caring and supportive Christian congregation, promoting fellowship through lively, creative, and educational activities, maintaining continuity by honoring our history and traditions, and serving those in need in our greater community through grassroots efforts. Together, these ideas offer a clear sense of how we understand God is calling us as a community of faith, living and engaging in ministry in this place, in this time. Yet, my friends, discernment is really only the beginning for having discerned God's call, we must then take the next steps toward responding to that call and fulfilling God's purposes for us. And just as it was with our faith ancestors, it can prove even more difficult to take that next step. At times we may feel inadequate to the task, like Moses, 
Or we may just want to go in the opposite direction, like Jonah. Paul's advice to Timothy offers us a message of encouragement in the face of such doubt and fear. A message that, should we listen, may keep us out of the path of the big fish that God might send to correct our paths if we otherwise choose to ignore God's call. Speaking to Timothy, Paul writes, and to us, through time, an assurance of the foundation that has been laid for him to confidently carry out his divine calling. He speaks of what he has been taught, and he points him to the tradition in which he stands. Paul offers the notion that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every work. This is a verse that is much debated by people of faith at different places along the Christian continuum, but at its core, it is a reminder that others who have come before us in our faith tradition, some whose stories are recorded in Scripture, and others who have come along since, were inspired by God to fulfill their calling. For Timothy, Paul points to Scripture, which for us is both the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament. But more than that, this idea of inspiration, 2,000 years after Paul was writing, incorporates the faithful work of the saints we find throughout the history of our church. And further, embracing the idea that God is still speaking today, we know that God continues to inspire even today. In our past as a congregation, we have proven fully prepared to embrace this call. For we look back and stand upon a foundation anchored in a tradition in this congregation that has captured the essence of the call that we have discerned. A tradition of spiritual inclusivity of care and support, of active participation with and service to others, a tradition of embodying the love of God in the world. So just as Timothy is reminded of his call and encouraged by God, by Paul, to carry out his ministry fully, so we are similarly challenged. As individual members and as a collective community of faith, as the Manhattan Beach Community Church, we are fully equipped to fulfill the call of God that we have discerned, to carry out our ministry fully. As we move through the next five weeks of this stewardship season, we will continue to hear about the ways in which we seek to fulfill our call. As those involved in the faith-driven ministries in our congregation share with us what they are doing, what we are doing, ministries like social action and communication. And each of us is invited to bring our whole selves to the fulfillment of this call as we offer our human and financial resources to make these ministries flourish and to envision new ministries in which we might engage to fulfill God's call even further as this expression of the body of Christ. It may not be easy to discern how God is calling us at all times. And we may be hesitant at times to respond to God's call. Yet we have seen in the past how inspired people of faith can change lives, fulfilling God's calling. And my friends, I promise you, when we bring our whole selves into these ministries, when we offer our resources to ensure that we carry out our ministry fully, when we carry forth God's good news through word and deed, we will continue to change lives, and we will change the world. Amen.